Hi everybody, you are listening to Voice of Aroha on Frequency 106.1 FM from Wellington, New Zealand. This show is sponsored by Host International New Zealand, also is broadcasting on Wellington Access Radio. Joining me today is my co-host Narges, Cordrian and Louise. And we have a special guest today, Manan and Nicola. Um, they're both from Ignite. Thank you so much for joining us today. How are you guys doing? Yeah, I am doing well. It is such a good day. I'm really excited about this interview. Yeah, Mike Rice, really good. Yeah, got back, uh, got back to see some of our young people today. So yeah, that was a really, really cool, good vibes, good energy. Why don't you guys introduce yourselves and let us know a bit about your organisation? Yeah, Nicola can go first. <laughs> oh, thanks, Manon. Uh, so we work for Ignite Sport. Um, it's a charitable trust and um, the main thing that we do is youth development work. So we um, are based in Lower Huts um, in the Wellington region and we work mostly in that area, but we do have um, some programs that reach into other areas as well. So we work with schools and the young people in their schools, um, just helping them to, to be what they you know, be what they're meant to be and help them along and support them. And Menon and I in particular work with former refugee young people. Yeah. Pretty much how, that. Um, how did the um you guys how did you guys form kind of like the organization? Like what was the process like from like the beginning to like where it is now? Yeah. So um for the beginning of what we would say Ignite is a little bit different to the beginning of the refugee program that we call Fusion. So like Ignite started uh, way, way back in 2002 or so by our founder who's currently still working with us, um, a guy called Kevin Goldsbury. Um, He's the man. He's such a good guy. (laughs) And uh, he started it. uh, It was like an off branch or off like, I don't know, cut section of something called YFC, um, which was a youth organization um, that was just all throughout New Zealand and all throughout the world. And um, it was just a branch of that that just cut off and just became its own thing. Uh, And so Ignite started officially in 2008, but like in 2002 was when like it sort of like grew and birthed and developed from YFC. Um, the program was all about just like working with young people that are athletes, young people that are um, like young people that are athletes and to be able to just work with them and to be able to do youth development with them and to be able to not just, I think the biggest emphasis, sorry, was a lot of people were training athletes to be um, great at their skill, at their sport but no one was really training them or athletes to be great at like to be great people, to be just good individuals, to have character, to have integrity, to have um, any of those qualities that really make good people. Um, And so that's where Ignite Sport um, birthed from. And then Fusion came from um, the Red Cross partnering with Ignite um, for a connection that um, Kevin had. And it was it was real simple. It started in Hamilton of all places, and it was just a three day program. We just kept, we went over to Hamilton. This was years before me and Nicola even started at Ignite. Um, and in in Hamilton, what we did was we ran a three day program that was uh, targeted for former refugee young people that were in their I'd say first year of being in New Zealand, and. From that, we developed from Hamilton, we developed like a lower hut program, a Porirua program, there's a Palmerston North program, and it just keeps growing and growing and growing. Past the Nicola. Uh, yeah, so we still have those three day holiday program um, fusion events. Um, and then, as Man said, we keep growing. So we also have um, a relationship now with one of um, the schools in lower hut. And we go in and, and see the former refugee young people there every week. They have a sort of a Kiwi club hangout. So we go and see them and we um, spend time with them building relationship as well as having some days away from school together to, you know, play games, get to know each other and, and really develop that community and give them like that really safe safe space so that they can 
you know, venture forth and, and feel good about themselves. Mm. And then Manon, um, Manon is responsible for running um, what we call Fusion Plus, um, which is a regular youth group style um, group that meets three or four times a term. So I'll throw back to Manon. He can talk a bit about Manon, uh, Fusion Plus. Hi, do you want us to talk a bit more about our programs right now or a little bit later on? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, it will be great to know about your program. Yeah, you could also um, tell us a bit about your journey coming to New Zealand and what inspired you to get um, involved. Yep, yep, yep. So um, me personally, so I was born in a place called Bahrain. Um, both my both my parents migrated from India to Bahrain because my dad found a job, and I lived in Bahrain for seven years. If you know where Bahrain is, that's awesome. You're one of the very few people that do. Um, but I moved to New Zealand when I was seven and um, lived here since. And it was an interesting, interesting time growing up in New Zealand. Like it was pretty difficult. Um, there were a lot of things that I just didn't quite understand um, because I just didn't understand the culture of New Zealand as a seven year old coming into a new culture, coming into a new city, a new environment that I had no knowledge of how to fit in um i really struggled with that and i wrestled with that for pretty much most of like my teenage years and like my youth years um and so coming into ignite um as a youth worker and given the opportunity to work with former refugees and uh, migrants as well it gave me an opportunity to really like reflect a lot on what my youth was like it gave me an opportunity to think about hey you know I had a little bit of a tough time um I can't say that I was like it was the hardest time for me there were definitely people that struggled a lot more than me but I had a tough time adjusting to culture and understanding what community looks like um in New Zealand and so yeah I, it just gave me a great opportunity to work with um some young people that i've been where they like i can't say i've been exactly where they are but i've been a little bit i have some understanding of what it's like to not fit in or not feel like you fit in and so that's how my connection with fusion and my passion for fusion comes from and fusion plus is the youth group it's like a community group it's like a um it's like a place of belonging is another word of um, describing it um, for young people that are a former refugee or migrant backgrounds that just want to come out hang out play some sport and have fun they don't have to be athletic they don't have to be like the top of their game they don't even have to enjoy sport like they just have to they just want to they just have to be able to participate come along and just be be all in with us so yep and it's just a group of people we get together probably three or four times in a term um all the kids uh all the young people sorry are high school aged and i'm trying to think is there more to it we do a lot of fun stuff we just play a lot of sport and we do a, we do what we call workshops and they're essentially just um a lesson like an interactive lesson on life skills that might be helpful that you don't really get taught in school or you might not get taught in um school and yeah, right. Arthur to Nicola, or Corden, Cordrin. Yeah, yeah, it's great. I was just, uh, I want to ask Nicola, how was your experience joining this team? So, because I understand from a little thing that you were English teacher. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm, I'm a Kiwi. Um, I guess. My my like like you know those life changing events that you have and mine for me happened when I was eleven and I won a trip to Japan to go and be part of this um, big convention of other eleven year olds from all around Asia and the Pacific and so I met people from Brunei and obviously lots of Japanese people and Papua New Guinea and I think yeah the whole aim of that um, convention is to make international citizens like people who accept people for who they are and I think that was a pivotal moment for me I really love Japan and so when yeah when I finished university I saw I, there was an opportunity to teach English in Japan so I grabbed it and I I guess having you know I, I'm never going to be a refugee but having that experience of living in another culture you, you realize how important it is to 
find that place that you belong and find people to connect to and um yeah I just know how important that is and so I really want to help the former young people refugee young people in, in our country have that and I think New Zealand can only be a better country for having those young you know you guys and all those young people here and having them feel that this is their home and that they can contribute to our society that's awesome uh, um I think well, with uh, former refugee kids or refugee kids, um, obviously they've endured a lot coming here. So what kind of reactions do you guys get from them on trying to get them to join your program or their families interested? Um, do they connect right away or is it a bit difficult? Yeah. Um, Mio, you yeah, right. um, So I think the most initial connection with the young people is probably the hardest um just because a there might be a language barrier or b there might just be any like there's lots of barriers uh between us and the young people um that might um not stop but like hinder us to um really connect with them and so um i guess the initial is just like overcoming whatever barrier there might be but once, like, once we overcome that, I feel like sport is just like quite a universal language. Or just having fun is just quite a universal thing. Like, no matter, no matter who you are, or where you are, like, people just enjoy having fun. Like, if you're having fun together as a group, like, in a group of people, um, then that really builds connection, and that really builds like um, a community, or that really builds camaraderie, whatever the word is that you're looking for. And, yeah, from there, it becomes a lot easier to connect with the young people. It becomes a lot easier to um, bring them into our programs uh, because we have that connection, because we have that um, reputation, whatever it might be, of, like, we're fun, but we also, like, we're also really good people. We're good, like, we're good characters. We're, we have great programs that... Um, help develop the individual but also just aren't aren't just boring and yeah pass it over to nicola yeah and i think it's it's the partnerships that we have so obviously partnering with the red cross the red cross yeah. have a relationship with these families already so um that kind of gets us a bit of a toe in the door um and i think yeah as just backing up what manon says like if we can get the young people along then it's pretty easy to get them to you know want to keep coming back because we, we do have fun like Matt, Matt and I have fun um the young people have fun um so yeah so we've been talking to change makers as well so we're trying to yeah build up those relationships so that we can hopefully reach more young people so I have a question that's interesting to me Go ahead. Um, I guess, yeah, just what's interesting because you talked about the partnerships. Do you partner with the community directly or do you partner with the organizations who work with the former refugees and migrants? We don't have a lot of relationship with the actual, like, the ethnic community groups, I assume you mean, um, but it's more with organizations at this stage, but it's definitely something that we're open to. Yeah. Um, and Manon and I have lots of dreams for fusion mm -hmm. and where we'd like to take it. And I think, um, yeah, being able to reach in and connect with those community groups is going to really help us with yeah. the dreams that we have. Yeah. But also like a real simple connection is like um, me and Nicola, we try, we try, we're not amazing at it, but we endeavor to like connect with more than just the young person, but the family um and so having those family connections is really cool because um you get like family friends coming along now you get um because the, the family is connected to other families you know they know each other everyone seems to know each other um and so they get their kids to come along or their friends to come along and that's how it sort of builds as well yeah um and when you were talking about the partnerships and uh, do you guys have any um, any plans with the new resettlement places? Like, are you guys planning to reach these kids as well? Uh, yeah, it's definitely on our radar. Obviously, um, with the events that we've just been through, everything obviously went on a bit of a halt. But we are we're really aware that um, 
live in and Masterton, which are both within easy reach of us here in Wellington, um, are due to be new places of settlement for former refugees. So um, yeah, we're definitely keen into working with the Red Cross and um, give support in those areas if, if there's um, provision for us to get in there and, and run a program. We'd love to um, spread our wings. And I, I mean, it's all obviously relevant um, depending on whether we have funding, but um, yeah, I think the more places that we can get into, the more funding options become available to us as well. That includes, you guys talked um, about... Um, go ahead. Oh, sorry, um, that includes like also Tago, because as far as I know, there's a new resettlement place um, down in the South Island. Mm -hmm. So would you guys consider going down there as well? Mm. Um, yeah, uh, I would say that um that's probably that's possibly a consideration we haven't like really considered it too too much at the moment i don't think um but the thing is um we're really big on like we're we're really emphasizing like we we might do a three-day program like a three-day holiday program in levin or palmerston or any of the places down south we haven't got any connections with people down south yet but um for ongoing like work we we really try and emphasize like at palmerston north they do it really well like people within palmerston north continuing it rather than like because like we can come in for three days we can do our thing and it'll be great and young people will have fun and they'll learn something they'll develop a little bit like they'll get to know the community a little bit more but for ongoing work what we really emphasize and what we really try and do and we do it really well and Palmerston North does it really well. Like we, we try and connect with others that can um, continue it, that can continue the relationship, that can continue the, um, the program, that can continue working with these young people. Because obviously we can't go up to Palmy every week. Well, we could, but it would be just strange if we did it when there's amazing people up in Palmerston North that can do it themselves. What are the challenges you guys have experienced with creating these connections, um, especially mm -hmm. with presenting, for example, your workshops to schools? Mm -hmm. How do you get them on board? And have you experienced a kind of challenge with bringing that into Wellington Central? Because I've noticed most of your programs run in the greater Wellington region, like the hot area. Yeah. But I think, um, Wellington is, is one of like Manon and my our, our dream um, focus for, for the moment is we'd love to um, get something regular like a fusion plus going in the Wellington region so it's just a, um, we're slowly building up relationships and it's really cool that um, we're here meeting you guys and um, getting to know you guys better because I think you'll be part of um, our process of getting that going um, going forward. Um, so it's yeah, it's all about we need to build up the relationships to expand our programs. Hmm. Um, in terms of barriers, I think you said something along the lines of asking me a question, asking us a question in terms of like um, hurdles that we need to overcome to connect with schools in Wellington. Um, I guess like at the moment, like we haven't quite asked the question yet to the schools. We can even say like we haven't. We haven't pitched ourselves to the schools and like pitching your like pitching your organization to a school and like accepting new programs isn't like necessarily an easy ask because you have to staff it you have to be careful that you can pay the staff to do the program and there's a lot more um details behind it of course like nicola and i though like if we could we'd be in every school in wellington we would be in every school in potirua every school in lower heart like if we could but um, at the moment, we, we're looking realistically, hey, we, we, we're based in the hut. Um, they start with the schools in the hut and then work our way. We definitely have a dream. We definitely have a goal of trying to get into Wellington in the next, I'm not going to say how many years, but hopefully very soon. Um, yeah. Does that make sense? Does that answer your question? Yeah, that's awesome. Cool. Cool. That's great. Interesting. Yeah, hopefully we'll get more. So it's also maybe related to the same questions. It's maybe you talk to us about some numbers or some interactions about those people, because since like it started off uh, this organization, so how did you find the 
people from former refugees and migrants, they, did they like the program? Did they like the ideas? Mm. Are the involvement becoming more or do what, what is, mm. I tell us some of the, maybe success of this story? Mm. The program. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to go first or should I take? You can go first next and I'll tag in after you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, so generally the holiday programs, we're looking at around 25 to 30 um, young people that we get to meet and hang out with. Um, and I guess the success story for us is, is even over those three days, like um, I'll give you an example. So when we went to Palmerston North last year, we had um, a number of young women come along and on the first day they sort of sat on the side they didn't really want to integrate with with the others or participate and just slowly and slowly you know we sat alongside them and one of one of our staff would be with them and talk to them and 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 slowly it just kind of they opened up a bit and then they got involved and um you know we had um someone from the local badminton organization come along to tell them about how to play get into badminton and and then by that stage they were like right into it they were all you know they were competitive um and getting excited about you know when they they got points and so forth um so just those little journeys we see those all the time mm. um and, and that that they are what is key and then i think men and i just want these guys you know we all have dreams and everyone has the right to go for their dream and yeah. if we can help help them in any way yeah. um then yeah we do that like so you know, I saw something about a scholarship the other day. So I made sure that our young people that that applied to, they knew about it. Because I think that's often a big barrier for former refugees is just getting information about things. To them. Um, in terms of other success stories, um, like there's heaps, guys. It's always um, such a, like, it's such a blessing and such a privilege to be doing youth work um, and, some of them are like small wins, some of them are big wins. Like some of them you see in like a year, some of them you won't see till like 10 years after. But um, in terms of like what we've done with Fusion, like the Fusion Plus group, which is the group that I've talked about that um, meets more regularly, it's more of a community and it's more of like a, a place of belonging for people within Lower Hut that come along. So it's a Lower Hut Fusion Plus. And um, that was, that actually came out of we ran a three day holiday program. The ones that we talked about for new intakes that are in the first year in New Zealand. We ran a three day holiday program. And at the end of the three days, the young people were like, we just want to keep hanging out. Like we had so much fun. We, we want to keep doing this. And so we, that's what, that's where Fusion Plus came. And we just kept hanging out with these young people. We still, we kept meeting up with them and it's um, grown and numbers have grown. Um, numbers have like, gone up but i would say we average at about like 15 young people coming in every week there's some that like there's always like there's about maybe 20 or so part of the group and yeah it's really cool like you just you see people inviting their friends you see people wanting to come along and like what's even cooler and what's even better is like just the relationship you can develop with these young people over a number of years so I've, this is my fourth year in ignite i've ran the fusion plus program for almost three years now mm -hmm. and yeah like the relationships i've developed with some of the boys like the well, not if i ask you another question about like what do you think you work with the youth what what did you find that like which type of sport are more interested to them is it football or uh, what type yeah. of sport Especially with this where uh, communities from former yeah. refugees and like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um they're, they're a big fan of a variety. Like all of them definitely love football. Well, all the boys love football. Found the girls really enjoy badminton more. Would you agree, Nicola? Um, some of the girls are into football. Yeah. But yeah, football's a football's usually a pretty universally well liked activity. Yeah, yeah. You're trying like, to place us in categories, Nicola. Yeah, no, it's all about everyone having fun doing everything. But yeah. I think, like, also, like, I found, like, some of the boys that I've been working with, like, I don't know, after they've been in New Zealand for a few more years, like, it might be because they've been in New Zealand for a few years or maybe 
just they've really always enjoyed it, but they're getting into like newer sports like basketball will be a big one that's going around right now. A lot of people are like enjoying and looking into basketball at the moment, which is cool. That's so awesome. I love basketball too. Um, but yeah, like all of them have, they excel in different areas. Like if I, if I had to really think about it, like a few of them are really into basketball, a few of them are really into soccer, a couple of them are really into ultimate frisbee, if you know what that is. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just whatever they really enjoy. Yeah, I think uh, it was cool how you were talking about how you guys kind of like focus on the like, character building and yeah. kind of like, you know, just um, it, looking at athletes and just, you know, not looking at um, sport as just like bigger than just, you know, just, you know, sport, I guess. So what other like exercises and like workshops do you guys do like that focuses mm. on like character building and like mm. something outside of like doing the sports? Mm. Mm. Yeah, so we do. We run a lot of workshops. There are quite a few um, under the belt of Ignite. Um, the, the ones that come out of like straight away would be like run something along the lines of character versus reputation and like the importance of like your character more than your reputation. We run something called a balance workshop and it talks about um, it's as if like we talk about like your life having, having needing balance. So like looking after your 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 overall well-being. So that would be your physical health, your emotional health, your social health, and your spiritual health. Um, then we run other workshops alongside goal setting, um, pursuing excellence, and more. Can you think of any other ones, Nicola? I think the thing what we kind of often do is we'll pick up on something within the young people themselves that we feel we need to kind of talk about or yeah, help them develop more. And then often we'll sit down and try and come up with, with something. So um, yeah. men and men and I are always sort of coming up with new ideas or bouncing ideas off, off people or something we'll hear. Um, yeah. So did, we did one recently around like, you know, your comfort zone and how you need to kind of push, push out of that to, to grow and develop. Um, and just yeah, making them aware of, of all these different things that they can do to to be 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 awesome, really. And like, I wanna. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, okay. okay, as leaders, also like, what are like on a personal level, like, what are the things that like you guys like have learned throughout the years that you guys kind of like start to work on, like. Hmm. Um, me or you first, Max. You go first. Ah, okay, I'll take this one. As leaders, what is something that I've really like? Or like developing leaders as well like what's something really important um i was thinking about this i think like a really really important thing that um that ignite and fusion really tries to emphasize is like really like going after someone's like full potential like unlocking or creating a pathway for them to like go for their full potential not be limited or hindered in any way possible um to reach that to for them to reach their full potential so whatever that might look like for each individual it's so different but like we we at the night we try and like create steps or create pathway young people to reach that full potential whether it's um talking to them about character and like the importance of having good character or whether it's um, creating a goal setting plan um, I think that's really key and vital in leadership is to chase after your full potential and not be um, yeah not be like putting like a cap on how good like whatever your potential might be and the second thing um, I found is really really important is um, just like I think like for me I would say what I would look at success as, is if in 10 years time, um, the young people that we hang out with and like that hang out with each other, if in 10 years time, they're still friends and they still hang out and we still have contact with them, I would say like, that's a job well done. Like that is like, that is success right there. Like we have still, bit, we are still connected. We are still friends. We are still, um, looking after one another and that's like that's the important part right there in my opinion that's just me personally 
passing over to Nicola. I think for me, when you're when you're challenging um, young people to you know to to live up to their potential, um, you have to, you have to walk the talk. So it makes you think about yourself. Um, so yeah, I talked about I I, I did a comfort zone um, workshop recently, and I really realised that you know, I've gotten a little bit older, and I've kind of stopped pushing myself out of my comfort zone so much. And since I've done um, delivered that workshop for the young people I, I really had to be conscious of I need to continue to push myself out of my own comfort zone and the other thing I guess is it's just the amazing learning and it was the same when I was teaching you know I, I was teaching English but I was getting so much back like learning so much about different countries different cultures um, and it just broadens your world view and and it's just amazing all the you know the differences but at the heart of it so many similarities as well uh the interest you guys have seen in terms of the kids side and their involvement and encouragement by actually attending these programs and everything definitely reflects how there's a need for more facilities like this to be in place to help um just kids in general to in integrate with with the community that they're in but what have been the challenges for you personally in terms of do you feel a sense of pressure um, when things don't go wrong? Are you feeling the need to make sure that this goes well with like a you know a certain kid who might be be having more difficulty than other well You go you go first this time, Nicola. I went first last time. All right. Um, I think we're really, really lucky. Mm. And I think with within, like I've worked at a lot of a lot of places, and the the atmosphere at Ignite, I think, in too many other work places, mm. and it's the being that part of that that family and having that team and that support. Like, there's always someone. If, if you're sort of struggling a little bit, there's always someone there to show you a different path or show you what you could do or try something different. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we work in, with a really, really supportive team. Yeah, so true. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, great. So can you guys tell us a little bit about how COVID-19 has affected your activities and the lockdown? That, mm -hmm. uh, how does it exactly affect the programs that you run? Yeah. Yep, yep. Um, COVID-19 affected, so obviously we didn't see the young people um, that we wanted to see during that time, during the, I think it was about eight week period. Um, and so we didn't get to see them face to face. Um, what it did give us the opportunity to do though was um, be able to see them like on a video call and because they had a lot more free time, like we were able to see them a little bit more often. Um, some of the ones that I saw, at least, I saw them a little bit more often. So I saw a, a group of like two young people regularly, probably twice a week. Whereas like, I wouldn't have seen them that regularly, those two young people particularly, that often um, during, like if it wasn't COVID-19, because they would have had school, they would have had other commitments and they were just, on break and they were just chilling out and they had nothing else to do so they just wanted to hang out um but yeah it did like it did obviously stop us from seeing all of the young people that we wanted to see we did like do one or two zoom sessions um with the big group uh and it was just whoever wanted to come along came along and yeah it didn't didn't like hinder us from like messaging or keeping in touch with our young people, but obviously like without the face-to-face -face connection, it's a little bit different. And yeah, like without being able to connect through sport and connect through um, games and activities, all we had was Zoom. Um, it was a little bit different, but it was still really good like being able to see them and chat with them. Yeah, and um, Nicola, are you, now, so are the back to operating as normal in Liverpool? Uh, not quite. It's we're very much um, case by case. Different schools are having slightly different policies. So we were very lucky today. We were back um, 
with our fusion people at Hutt Valley High School. Um, so we got to hang out with them today. Um, and so, it was, yeah, it was really cool to catch up with them. Um, we're still Fusion Plus, we're having an, another session on Zoom um, this week, but I think we'll be looking now with the increase how we can come together, maintaining that social distancing and hopefully think of some activities that we can do um, that fulfill that brief. Um, and our holiday program was is due to happen in July. So we're I'm pretty positive that we'll be able to get that um, delivered as per usual. Right. Uh, we have just a couple minutes left on a last team. If you have a questions, go ahead. Yep. I, I do have a final question. So what is the goal in 10 years? Where do you guys see yourselves in the organization in 10 years time? Yeah. Shot Nicola, you got this. Um, yeah, I would really like us to just step by step sort of, you know, Wellington's kind of central, just keep expanding expanding out so yeah we'd like to get something regular into wellington uh we'd like to connect in with more schools because i think um we've, we're, we're finding that with this in the school situation it's a lot easier to to make those relationships and connect with the young um people because you're kind of validated i guess by the school um yeah and if we can get into more resettlement areas and make connections there and and maybe you know teach people there what we know so that they can have their own regular hangouts um with the young people yeah yeah i back that i completely back that i reckon in 10 years time if we get into we we just broaden our space from wellington that's exactly what we're looking for for our young people to still be connected and yeah pretty much it could you guys just let everybody know how we could get involved with your organizations and your programs? I guess the, the easiest way would be um, just to go onto the, the web, um, ignitesport.org.nz, um, and there'll be a contact through there. And if you say, say you're wanting to help with Fusion or former refugee young people, it'll find its way to um, either Manon or myself, and then we can make contact and find out um, what people are looking to, you know, what they want to offer and how they'd like to help. And then we can take it from there to see how we can work together to support these young people. Also hit us up on social media, Ignite Sport in Facebook and Ignite Sport NZ on Instagram. You can DM us, you can private, you might be able to though. Um, and yeah we'll we'll get in touch with you we're obviously like really we're pretty on board with social media and whatever that happens so whatever that looks like so we do have a facebook page that you can like and we do have an instagram page that you can follow and you can see all that we're doing with um ignite and fusion on their instagram and the facebook page yeah it's really awesome and i think we have just one minute to finish this program so yeah, that was really great to see what you do with the youth and engaging them, it's especially needed this time. We are so happy that you're back now in level two. And also there was a good news that Wellington City Council, are, they are providing the free grant and venue to hire for sports. Have you oh, yeah. that news? Yeah, it was just yesterday it was posted. So the huh? grant and venue hire for sports and recreation groups. Yeah. Yeah, check out the Wellington City Council. They are offering that. And yes, yeah. and this also to support the groups. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Uh, yeah. We will, Can oh, I? Yeah. Oh, sorry, I just wanted to also say my last bit. I don't know yeah. if it was a closing bit. Um, I just wanted to give a special shout out to you guys, um, Nargis, Cordrian, Louise, Beth. You guys are awesome. I really love what you guys are doing. Um, and thank you for having us. We really, really appreciate it. Um, we really appreciate the time that you've taken just to think of these questions and actually like um, ask them to us and really, um, really appreciate the passion and the love that you guys have for what you do. So shot oh, guys. Thank you. Thank you guys. We've been wanting, we've been wanting to organize this for months, me and Beth, since we met Manan and we heard about it every time we're like, we're going to get him for the next one. We're going to get him for the next one, but we finally made it happen. And we're all happy. And this is awesome. 
Yeah, it was very lovely to have you and we will share also a poster about you and the contacts that can people uh, directly contact by your email and social media pages. So again, thank you so much. It was very lovely to hear from you and um, we are into the program of this today. So thank you so much for all our listeners. If you have youth from former refugees migrating, contact them. It's a great way to be connected. Thank you. Bye bye.
sé que te perdí Shirazo, Homo, Roma, Brintane, Udalle, Dalle, 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 Dalle,